Hi everyone, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here with another PB&J card class and this is number 8 out of 11 videos in our Share Your Love Sketches video series where I am sharing card designs and products that can be used to send loving wishes to someone any time of the year. So here is a look at today's sketch. This was inspired by a card I had seen done by Therese Calvert. So I'm going to put a link down in our YouTube our YouTube description box to her card as well. So what I've done is I love to prepare like the main elements of my sketch ahead of time. So I have cut out these banners, stamped and cut them out, as well as, so that's from our banner blooms cut um, stamp and cut out die, as well as these flowers from our tenderness stamp and cut out die. So these are some from my stash that I just love and I went ahead and just prepped those in advance. And I just keep everything in an envelope. Now before we begin I wanted to remind you again that all of these sketches are in, that are in this Share Your Love video series. I've put together an ebook for you with a two-page spread for each video so you can easily see the sketch, product ideas for getting started as well as the cards featured in each video. And I think seeing them together helps you see the different ways you can modify the sketch and make it your own. So it's a really affordable PDF download. i um, put a link for you down in the YouTube description box and if you want to check it out you can to show your support. So I went ahead and stamped these adorable critter images from our cuteness stamp set. This is a new stamp set from Penny Black so I love mixing and matching some older things from my stash with some newer things. I've stamped everything here onto Canson 140 pound watercolor cold press watercolor paper and I'm going to paint them in using my distress reinkers used as watercolors. I've got them on a palette there as well as a cup of water and a paper towel. And how I like to paint these is to first put my paintbrush into that concentrated reinker ink and put it where I want it to be the darkest. Then I take my paintbrush and I dip it in the water to rinse it off, pat it on the paper towel, and then I can go back and blend that out. I can add as many layers as I want to to darken things up. If I want to lighten the color, I can go in with a clean and fairly dry paintbrush to lift some of it if it is still wet. And if you want to see my painting in more detail and slowed down, I do have a video where I walk you through that much slower if you want to see that. So I'll link that for you down below as well. And down in that YouTube description box below, you'll find all these Penny Black products listed and linked as well as I've just went ahead and listed everything that I'm using for you. So paint colors, ink colors, any um, supplies I'm using like my paintbrush, all of that's listed for your convenience if you want to check it out in more detail. So I'm going through and I'm going to paint the banners and the flowers and the super cute critter images. And what I love about this design is you can just pop in those different critters, mix them in sort of peekabooing over the banner or sitting on the banner or um, around the flowers just to create a really fun, clean and simple design. And again, just by changing the sentiment on this, you can use it for many different occasions. So after I did that banner, I wanted it to have just a little more variation. So I'm just going right back in on top and adding some more color. And that I think is one of the beauty, beautiful things about watercolor. It's very forgiving. You can keep adding layers till you're completely happy with it. And then these are those flowers from the tenderness and tenderness cut out. And again, just putting that darker color on. And then I will go back, blend it so it's more concentrated. Then I rinse off the brush and come back in with just like a damp brush. There's not much water on it to blend it out. And I'm not going for perfection on these. I'm leaving some white along the tips of the petals. That also helps add to that look. But these are a very whimsical looking flower and the um, critters on these are very whimsical. And so you can go very whimsical with your painting as well. 
I think the biggest tip I can give you is even if you want to do pretty much a flat wash of color, leaving just a little bit of white on the edges of the petals will make a really big difference in giving some life and sort of depth to your flowers. Now with this sketch, I have added the critters in as kind of a little peekaboo element, but if you don't like to do critters, then you could also just add a little die cut leaf there or just do this sketch with the flowers and the banner. So here is another flower. On this one, I'm just gonna paint right over the top. So I'm not even worrying about each petal, but just kind of going darker towards the center and lighter as it extends out. Just some variation with it. And I'm trying to match it up to the banner. It doesn't need to be exactly the same, but I'm just kind of comparing them. And here's another one. I'm not going to worry so much about the shading. So you can see the quality of the illustration will carry you you don't have to do a lot of shading with it. It will still look really fun and pretty. And these I just keep going back and forth. I put the yellow on there and I really didn't like how that looked. So I'm just gonna go right over the top. Again, the beauty of watercolor. <laughs> And now some pink. So I kept this in here just to show you that I'm not always happy with the way that it turns out right at first, but most of the time if you just keep layering things up, especially if it's within the sort of the same color family, so purples and pinks and reds, you will be okay. Here I'm putting a little red. So you can see it is <laughs> me fiddling around. Eventually I will get where I like what I've done. So here is a look where you can see I've finished painting, finished changing my mind, <laughs> and I've kind of put together some arrangements, making three cards with the sketch, which is what I like to do. I like to do about three variations on the sketch at a time. To me that's just the right amount without getting bored, but feeling like it was worth getting everything out for it. So that's what I have so far. And now here are those super, super cute critters from that Tenderness Transparent set. Um, I'll link it below, but it is so cute. You'll want to check it out. There's lots of different images on it. And I'm going to do super simple painting on this. I just pressed a Memento Toffee Crunch ink onto an acrylic block. I want to have just a little bit of shading on these so that they look finished. So they look like I did something with them. Give them a little bit of life, a little bit of shadow, but not much else besides that. I've also kind of like you saw put those banners together and those flowers so I can have an idea of what other colors I may want to have on these. So I painted them to match and fussy cut them out and here is what they look like. These are the three that I chose but really any in that set would work with this sketch. It's a really great one for these adorable little critters or any that you might have in your stash. Now this is from our Forever Edger. If you've been watching this video series, you'll see that I've reached for this many, many times. And Penny Black's Edgers are really great because you get an Edger. I'm not using it on this card, but um, on another video I used it, but you also get these great words. So this sketch you could modify just by putting a different Edger design, a different die cut word across that banner, or you could even stamp onto that banner. Here I'm just inking mine with um, Distress ink and an ink blending tool and a foam pad, just pouncing on that ink till I'm happy with the color. I want to be sure that it really stands out on that banner, but I didn't want it to be too stark, like a white on all that color, if that makes sense. So it's kind of tone on tone, but quite a bit darker. And as you can see, I'm just kind of working along assembly line style on each of these elements for the three cards. So all the stamping, all the painting, all the inking of the die cuts, and then I can work on the assembly. I like to glue a couple of these together for dimension. At first I thought I wanted to offset it so that a little bit of that white 
would show when I layered it onto the banner. But once I saw that, I really didn't like the way it looked, so I just slid it over. <laughs> so I just felt like that got too busy. Now looking at it on camera, maybe it's okay, but I felt like it got too busy. So before it dried, I just slid it over. So it's just the one layer. And then I will add that to the banner. And you can kind of curve those and bend them a little bit so that they look like they were just made perfectly for the banner. And that forever word fits on there wonderfully. Then I'm going to just add these elements to a plain standard size card base. This is four and a quarter by five and a half inches, this panel. So I can pop these up, including that adorable little critter. I love that she's got mail there, so like a little snail mail. And then I can add the flowers in there for interest. And I'm kind of doing a diagonal cascading design going down the card with those flowers. And you'll notice I am having the top flower and the bottom flower extending beyond the edge of the card. And that just adds some interest. So I'll flip that over and trim off the excess. And then I'm going to stamp a secondary sentiment. So this is from our forever builder and it's all different little phrases that you can use with that word forever. So, and they work for different occasions, not just a love, but you can also do like forever friends. Stamping that in my stamp positioning tool. And then finally to embellish, I'm just going to tuck in a few self adhesive pearls sort of following that diagonal cascading design with part of them going underneath the um, stamps. And the card is complete. So here's a still shot of that finished card. And then we'll take a look at all of the cards that were made using this sketch. These were really, really fun to create. And I love the pop of color against that simple white background. So here's that one. You can get a look at some of that dimension on there. And then you can put them at different heights. So you can do them up higher or down lower on the card. You could even turn it and do it more of a landscape orientation and switch up your colors. Just another reminder that um, this video is part of a series of sketches created to help you bust through your stash. So if you want to see how I got ready to do all these videos and prepared setting up my stash and my sketch boxes, it's a really great system for actually using what you have and getting in there and getting to crafting and enjoying your hobby. So I'll put a link for that video for you down below. I'd love to know if which one of these is your favorite. I think mine is the little snail mail one. Leave me a comment. I love reading what you have to say and it's very encouraging. I thank you very much. And be sure you subscribe because there are more videos coming. Ring that bell icon so you get notified every time a new one goes live. Thanks for watching.